Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I want to continue talking about LEDs. Uh, this time I want to talk about using LEDs to light up your structures on your model railroad. And, you know, the approach I'm going to use is fairly easy, uh, straightforward wiring and uh, something that gives you a lot better lighting as far as I'm concerned than using individual LEDs or light bulbs like we've done in the past. Um, one thing I want to say, uh, please go ahead, if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do it. It's fairly straightforward. You know, there's a little button right here on the lower right hand side of your screen uh, that you can click on and subscribe to the channel. And I'd really appreciate it if you would do that. And you'll be notified every time I put up a new video. But for now, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the approach that I'm going to be showing you today uh, uses these strips of LEDs. And, you know, these are, are right, right, you know, readily available. Uh, you can get the uh, rolls uh, from Micromark uh, easily. They sell them and they sell power supplies for them and, and all kinds of other stuff. Uh, I got these off of eBay. I ordered them directly from a supplier in China. And uh, you can get these. They come on these reels. And there's, uh, I believe, yeah, five meters on the earth on each reel. So that's 15 feet that you get. And I purchased these several years ago to use uh, on the underside of our kitchen cabinets when we redid the kitchen. And so they provide uh, light on the countertop. Uh, and, and it's a very convenient way of doing that. They have uh, 3M tape on the back, adhesive on the back, so you can just peel the uh, protective uh, strip off and you know, and they'll adhere to the underside of a cabinet, or in this case, to the uh, inside of a structure somewhere. Okay, so let's take a look at this. If you look here on these rolls, uh, right at this point, there's a little cut mark, and there's a little pair of scissors there indicating that. And there's four copper colored tabs. And all you have to do is take your scissors and snip, and you have a three LED strip that you can use in your buildings. Okay. Now the nice thing about this is it's marked as positive and negative. So the polarity is taken uh, care of for you. And then you've got these 50 by 50 LEDs. Now 50 by 50 means they're five millimeters by five millimeters. Okay. And they're nice equally spaced out here with a resistor to drop uh, the voltage and the current down to what these individual LEDs need. And, and that is very important to remember when you start installing these kind of things because, you know, you can, in, you can use these underneath the uh, upper deck of a layout uh, to light the layout. And I have a, f a couple of friends who have done that. And you can also get these in um, large uh, postage stamp size uh, squares with a very large LED on it. The problem with these is um, each one of these uh, strips or sections here, rolls, uh, takes about one amp per meter, or about every three feet, it takes one amp of current to uh, to power these suckers. And that can add up. So like here on the Piedmont Southern, where I have about 100 feet of, uh, of overhead uh, trackage, uh, you know, that's going to be something like 31 amp strips, or 30 amps to power these suckers if I went that route. And these things are available now. You can get these with a much wider spacing, but that gives you less light. And you can actually get these now where they have double wides, basically. So you've got two of them, uh, two sets of LEDs paired with each other on the roll. And so they're gonna take two amps per meter. And I have a friend that used those on his layout and, uh, you know, you've got the option of doing that, but all your light's going to be coming out of one place. You can put them apart like that and get, you know, twice as much. The problem you're going to run into is it takes a lot of amperage. And, you know, so you have to be aware of how much amperage each one of these devices is, is drawing when you start using these kind of things. Okay, so let me go ahead and move over. So basically then, I showed you that we have... Our, uh, our little cut section here, and you cannot cut anywhere else in here because it will destroy the circuit internally. So you can only cut at these cut marks 
uh, on the on the rolls, and then uh, these are a 12 volt DC uh, uh, powered uh, device at that point. Okay, so you just hook up a you know a positive and a negative to a 12 volt source, and you've got light, and it's it's fairly bright. And let me let me give you an example of that. So let me show you just how bright these suckers do light up. Now here's one, and I've hooked this up to a 9 volt battery. Okay, so it's not hooked up to a 12 volt source. All of that light is coming from 9 volts. So it's going to be proportionally uh, more light coming out uh, if you hook that up to a 12 volt source. And if you put that inside of a building, it's really going to light it up. So you want to be able to control the intensity of the lighting. And you can do that quite easily. And let me show you how. I have a simple potentiometer. Okay, and a potentiometer is a variable resistor. Okay, so you it's got a little dial here, and you can turn this dial. So what I want you to do is watch the watch these lights as I turn this dial. Okay, you can see the intensity is dropping down, and now it's just about gone out. Okay, so I'll turn it back up, and the bright it starts to brighten up and coming back to full brightness. So what you can do then is just go on, you know, go to allelectronics.com and get you a uh, 0 to 10,000 ohm or or so uh, a potentiometer like this one. Uh, they're called a trim pod or a trim potentiometer, dial potentiometer. I'm, you know, there's a lot of people have different names for these things, but they sell these at, in, in most electronic supply catalogs. And um, Unfortunately, Radio Shack's not around, so you can't just go down and pick one up. But at any rate, so what you can do is take a look at the light strip here and then adjust it to whatever intensity you want. Okay, so we got full brightness at 9 volts, and let's drop it down a little bit. Okay, so let's go somewhere about like that. Now, at that point, if you're happy with that, what you can do is take your voltmeter and I'm going to disconnect the wire or the power source and what I've done is I've hooked up the leads, positive and negative leads, from my uh, multimeter here so I can measure the uh, resistance across this potentiometer. So let's turn that on to resistance and let's see what it says. Okay, it looks like right now it's reading 156 0.4, ohms, okay? So right off, that tells you that all you need to be able to drop the amount of light coming out of this little device is about a 150 ohm resistor. So you can put that in line, and solder it in place, um, you know, in your feed line, positive or negative side here, uh, and that's all it would take. And then you could go ahead and install it, and that's the intensity of the light. Now, one other thing you can do is you can just buy yourself a bunch of these little trim pots and just use those instead of a resistor. And then you could, in the future, change that. Um, you'll, you'll be able to change the intensity of the light if you decide you want it brighter or if you want it dimmer. So, you know, it's a fairly straightforward, easy thing to do. You know, you can use multiples. Like I said, you can uh, wire these together as long as you observe the correct polarities and uh, go ahead and create individual sections a few inches apart. So you can adjust the amount of lighting in each section of the building that you're working on. So if you have a large, long uh, warehouse uh, building, say like the uh, Walther's Water Street Terminal uh, structure. You could put one at one end and one at the other and one in the middle. Uh, it all depends on how much light you really need. You, the only potential problem you have is you always have to keep it down to these three LEDs because that's what the cut strip gets you down to. So the good thing is that you can at least drop the intensity down really low or you can kick it up to adjust for the intensity that you need. So that's a pretty straightforward way to go about doing that. And also, because the, the lighting is spread out, you don't have what I call a hot spot. And hot spots are caused by a very bright bulb or LED um, lighting up one end of a building more than another. 
and uh, causing literally the plastic, uh, in many cases, to glow <laughs> and um, uh, and bleed light through the structure itself. And you know you can you can offset that by painting the inside black. I'd go ahead and paint the inside of the building anyway, just to to prevent any uh, uh, hot spots. But then you can go ahead and put that in there, adjust the amount of light that you want, and there you are. So I'm going to show you an example uh, here on the uh, Piedmont Southern that uh, I did. It's a small grocery store, and I wrote about it in my book wiring projects for model railroads and showed how I built, you know, how I did this procedure in there. So this will, you know, if, if you need to uh, uh, read something about it and get and look at some other photos, uh, go ahead and get a copy of that book. It's still available from Walters and um, you can get it from amazon.com as well. Okay, here we are on the Piedmont Southern layout and I've, I've got this little grocery store uh, that as I said, I, uh, I showed how to light up and fill the interior uh, in uh, one of the chapters in my book, uh, Wiring Projects for Your Model Railroad. So uh, you can see here, it's, you know, the lights are off, nobody's home, it looks dark, it looks unoccupied, it looks basically abandoned. So let me go ahead and we'll light it up and bring it to life. So I'm going to turn this on and half of the locomotives on the railroad that uh, are not set for silent mode are going to come on. So you're going to hear a bunch of of startup <laughs> and, and a lot of dings and bongs and stuff. So get ready for that. And then we'll take a look at the lighting. So here goes. Okay, so there you can see now, uh, it's all lit up. Uh, you can see there's an interior that I've added to the building and uh, the uh, it uses an individual uh, strip of that LED lighting tape that I showed you. And I just used a 300 ohm resistor with that one to bring the light down to an intensity that was uh, suitable for this particular structure. So uh, one of the things that I will point out when you do this kind of thing, you have to go back and make sure that uh, the inside of your building is completely sealed because you know, you'll get little light leaks around the windows and doors and all kinds of places like that. Uh, because these are kits and they don't fit as tight as uh, a real building would. But that's just, you know, one of the things you have to be aware of when you uh, when you do this. Boy, all the locomotives are cranked up, aren't they? Okay, so there you go. That's, uh, that's an idea of what uh, the difference looks like between a well-lit building like this one with an interior and one with the lights turned off. It really, really changes the look of the structure as far as I'm concerned. And it's worth the trouble of adding these little light strips. Well, I, uh, I hope that gives you some ideas on how you can uh, use LEDs to light the inside of your structures. You know, like I said before, it's a really easy method to use. And uh, it gives you the, uh, the ability to get much more even lighting inside of a structure than you get from individual light bulbs or LEDs. So have a good week and we'll see you on Friday with a look at the Woodland Scenics Just Plug lighting system. Take it easy now.